just in the beginning. And uh, Chad, do you want to say hello and maybe give some context of like this conversation? Does the is- existence of Fang hurt open source? <laughs> Which is a uh, it's 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 very clickbaity. I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really interesting. Oh, and. It's, I, I would even go as far as to say it's not necessarily only Fang, but I would say the kind of incentive structure of software engineers of kind of like um, how software engineers try to get promotions through, through kind of having high impact. But impact is generally measured on like, you know, revenue brought into the business and so on and so forth. And there's like this disconnect between open source projects and you know revenue generated um generally um at the very least for fang according to the article and so it's like that's kind of really interesting you know but yeah that's pretty much my thought yeah yeah and um so the article itself am i correct that this was the progress pragmatic programmer gurgly i'm not honestly don't know if i've heard his name out loud before yeah i just go with the girly i think he that's how i've heard him pronounce his name uh i'm terrible at pronouncing his name as well to be quite honest with you but yeah it's the the pragmatic engine i just let never heard that out loud <laughs> yeah no yeah so the pragmatic engineer um spent like i think about four and a half years at, at uber i've been actually following his his free newsletter so i don't pay for the actual paid newsletter um, but he usually has some pretty good insight on just like what's happening engineering wise and and culture and like you know uh, leveling up but gr- also scaling engineering teams. Uh, so in the case of this was there's like this system where when you go for promotion inside of um, it's not it's not Fang specific but Fang is such a, a good term to apply <laughs> to this company size um, big tech. Um, but you, you, you basically go up for a promotion. Like, so when you get to staff and beyond, you have to get buy-in from the higher-ups to show the, the company value you've provided. Uh, and like the, the TLDR of this, this article is for folks who support Kubernetes. So like you imagine you work at, um, Google's not an example, a good example, because GKE is what they actually support internally. But um, imagine like Microsoft, maybe, sorry, I don't, it might be a bad example, but anyway. Let's take Microsoft, for example. They have folks who support Kubernetes because they have services or other tools internally that need Kubernetes support. Um, if you're a staff engineer and you're now moving into principal or distinguished or level 70, whatever, um, like the, op- the option for you to show business value is that you got releases shipped and deployed for Kubernetes. Uh, I see Jeff in the, in the audience too as well. Like flip this around to like Django. Like uh, you work core team Django, but you also have a day job. And your day job is supported by the core team efforts you do on Jago or, or Ruby or whatever. Uh, but when you go to sell your business value, it's all open source contributions. So what they're seeing is that, uh, and this is all from an article that's linked in the, the, the Jumbotron, is that when you get to a certain level, if you only do open source contributions, you're not getting promoted further, like past that higher escalon of, um, of whatever distinguished engineer or whatever it is. So you have to make a choice career-wise. Do you like move into architect and work on actually infrastructure and business-related problems, or do you stick stick it out in open source and go find a new job somewhere else? And what I've seen personally is that folks, including people in my tenure at GitHub, folks just move on to the next thing so they can t- continue or next company that will support their open source contributions. But did I did I kind of summarize that well, or did I miss miss spots? Um, at least for me, I would say yeah. That sounds like that sounds like a pretty good summary. Uh, uh, uh personally, I know there's at least according to the article, because to be honest, I haven't had that experience or even had that experience like through somebody else telling me. But you know, there's also kind of like some people just kind of just drop from from the the um the project well they just kind of ab- abandon open source and just kind of move on you know to to kind of moving their career forward and like so what i was thinking it kind of has this perpetual state of 
Um, I, I remember having this conversation with you um, when we were originally talking about this. It feels like this kind of perpetual state of new people coming in because those are the people that are the most, the more likely to 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 benefit from open source. You know, because like you, as you're saying, as you get higher in the ranks in 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 big tech, um, and I mean, yeah, as you get higher in the ranks of of big tech, like it just becomes harder and harder to support your to support open source while actually moving up in your career you know i don't know if you think that's like the if i hit the nail on the head there yeah yeah and i i think that's something that um so we we chatted a couple weeks ago at one of these spaces uh which i think is still floating around i we aren't doing a good job of uh sort of cataloging these conversations hopefully in the future now that we've sort of figured out how to build this layout i've been I don't know if you've noticed, I've been messing around with this while we were chatting. Um, there, we had a conversation around providing value. So like your code's fine or your code's great, but the product sucks. So like the conversation we had a couple of weeks ago is like, you're just working on the wrong stuff. So if you happen to be working on, uh, I'll just example, which is, um, <laughs> sorry, th- I don't want to do anything specific to GitHub because uh, <laughs> it might be a, a, a too soon. But like example would be like GitHub jobs. GitHub Jobs was like a platform to share jobs within the ecosystem, open source or not. Um, it's, it was a job board. Uh, it wasn't supported for like years. It was actually thrown together by an early GitHub employee uh, and sort of this been around for a while. Uh, so it got sunsetted because it just no support. Uh, also, it was support. It was actually built on top of Heroku, uh, which also had a whole other issue. So that got sunsetted basically. Um, if you were working on that full time, and the project itself got sunset, like now you are now looking for a new team, which, and no one was really working full time on that. But the, the conversation we had from there is like, you weren't, if you were on that pro- that product, you weren't providing business value. You're either gonna have like get moved to a new team or you're gonna be moved to a new company, like by your own accord, by being laid off or whatnot. That's not what happened with GitHub uh, jobs in particular, but just <laughs> just one of the, the, the me- me- mentioned that as well. Um, and then also a reminder, if anybody has any, any commentary about their experience in doing open source full-time at a company, uh, whether it was you or you sort of work with folks, uh, feel free to either, on the bottom right, you can comment on my original ish, my tweet, uh, and we'll, we'll cover that. Uh, but we could also, like, you can just request, and you can jump up and speak. But yeah, going back to this conversation around, I'm working full-time at open source. I'm supporting the business by contributing back to open source projects. But there's like, there's a... It, it's hard to, uh, is it like, what's the analogy? See the, the forest through the trees? Like, yeah, like you could be working on something really, really impactful for the entire community of Kubernetes or, or Django. Uh, but when that gets merged or when that release gets cut, does that in particularly provide business value when you go to get submitted for a promotion? And that's the hard part is actually to, to justify that. And I, I was actually talking to some startup founders. Um, they built a product around MDX, which is a markdown library for um, uh, in, injecting markdown inside of modern JavaScript. So like Next.js or React or whatnot. Um, and it's like a combination of markdown and JSX. Anyway, not, not a problem. Uh, but they actually, they're, they're, they want to fund open source contributors uh, because their product is actually built on MDX, an open source library. So if they fund contributors to the open source library MDX, they can produce like more feature development uh, for their product. So it's like advantageous for them to do that. Uh, so I mentioned that because that aligns with very clear business value, and it's a startup. But if I'm working at a large company like um, a Facebook, I, I don't know if that's a, a Facebook meta, or whatever. Um, like, there's some clear value you can provide, like if you contribute back to React, or if you contribute back to a, number one of their other open source libraries. But if you're contributing back to, I don't know, a random library that's not actually within the ethos of React, like even even though Redux got absorbed, the maintainer got absorbed in the, into to meta and is contributing to React, Redux would be one of those things because. Facebook is not necessarily like they could be using Redux, but it's not like their their bread and butter business value. And like I'm, I'm speaking with no experience in working at Meta. Right. No. Yeah. No. I completely agree. I completely agree. Like, 
I so even as you were think, speaking, I know there was there's this also this other kind of commentary about just uh, you know you were talking about it a little bit, but just like trying to make money in in open source in general, and it's like you know I I I don't know if necessarily it was you or if it was somewhere else, but you know that conversation about you know you 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 maintain an open source project, you're effectively trying to to do that full time and get paid for that project, and like the business value isn't necessarily there. It, it, it provides value to engineers, like they use it all the time, but to translate that into like money in your pocket is is difficult. And it just kind of feels like the, 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 the you know, conversation about big tech and promotions is the other side of that coin, where it's like you have some people who are contributing to open source, but they're not associated with anybody there. They're, they're practically freelance, you know, like, well, maybe for freelance is not the best word, but, you know, they're on their own. And then there's people who are contributing to open source and they're attached to a company. It just feels like the same conversation in with different stakes or different a different environment. It's, yeah. it's just it's this real weird kind of finance and open source. And that kind of relationship is very strange, at, at least from my observation. Yeah, and uh, uh, Carl, I bumped you up. Welcome back. How are you doing? Hey, hey. Uh, this actually doesn't seem like a problem that hasn't existed for some ver for a very long time. I think it's always been on the kind of, you know, engineer wanting to progress their career to make some decisions and learn how to present a business case. Because if, like, if you look back at kind of like the Bell Labs days, they always had to provide how is this going to benefit the phone company to some extent or another. And there were pro times where projects got cut off and people got moved to other things and projects shifted off to academia or some, some other place. I think that there, it's just the life cycle of a project. Maybe something is great when you are working on it and it is actually providing a valuable use case, but then at some point it may not just be in the best interest for someone of that caliber to be working on that full time within that organization. And I think that is okay. I think this problem does probably get a little bit more tricky as we get larger and larger and you need to have a certain amount of big tech to fund open source to some extent but i do think this is a problem that's always existed yeah this this is true and this is something that i don't know if it's top of mind for me now because i'm working on a open source product that will hopefully support open source not solve this problem at all uh but i just recently saw a large company uh just announce layoffs like last month uh and one of the folks that got laid off was the their head of their ospo and uh, OSPO's being like their open source program office. So like their entire goal was to make sure that this company did better and like gave back better when it comes to open source. Um, and like this is a different problem than you trying to get leveled up to staff or senior engineer, but they didn't make the cut when it came to layoffs. Like obviously this was, it was redundant. Uh, it wasn't like a, a business value that they think that, that weathering the current recession storm uh, this company did not, and I'm trying to avoid because like this, this is not a big team that got laid off. So I don't want to like out this individual. Um, but it, I, I imagine if you're, if at the end of the day, they're saying, uh, what have you done for me lately? Or what have you done for this company lately? And all you've done is like organize open source contributions. It, it's, it's a very, I guess at this point, an awkward conversation. If you're in a company like that, that doesn't have like a, a strategy around it. I, I I do feel like that is like very company dependent on like how they move through the world and how the founders or the the board kind of sees that position. Because like if you look at there's even some more like entrenched big tech companies that you wouldn't think are providing a lot to open source that are like if you look at SAP and its work with Gartner and just its open source contributions kind of in general to like the JVM, things like that they they really are seem to be committed and really do be really are pumping out money and have a head of open source and you know 
had the right channels for people to do that. So I think it just depends upon the company. I would think VMware probably is in the same boat boat where they're they're investing a lot to make sure that they continue to be able to capitalize on their their open source contributions when they are making them. So I I do think this is like this is a very company specific thing and whether or not the leadership is I don't want to say smart enough but you know rather they're can make that align with the goals of making money in whatever industry they're in. So either Carl or Chad figured take this question, but is it on the engineer to constantly show their value and, and keep good records on what they've done lately or what the impact they've done and what the goodwill is coming back to the company? Um, to be quite honest, I would... So the, the 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 problem is if you say say no, what's the alternative? You know what I mean? Like, like who? It, 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 because the, if you say no, then you you know you're kind of pushing it to the to the company and the the, the company. And I, I'm not saying necessarily that the 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 company should or should not. It's just like if they're if they're focusing on profit, like like. If if they don't if they don't see the value, they're just not going to see the value. So I feel like it's not even necessarily a question of should the the end. It's almost like they're just kind of forced to, um, no matter what. Like you know, if it's a com- if it's a project that they've kind of started or they've been heralding for a period of time, they're going to probably the be the ones that are you know trying to constantly say you know hey this is the one this the thing that has value you know it's like regardless of whether or not you know from a moral standpoint i guess i don't know i can't think of a better phrasing but from a moral standpoint like whether or not uh, other people should be involved in saying that it, it, it has a lot of value like they're kind of the ones that they're the ones kind of left holding the bag you know what i mean more more oh so go ahead this might be just due to the nature of like what I do. Like I'm an engineering manager, so my my like default answer is yes. It's on on you to kind of make sure that you're advocating for yourself and keeping a good record. Um, I I think that that's just a good skill probably to have, anyways. Even if like if you intend to go down the road of being a completely open source maintainer, um, you have to find out how to make that work for you from a uh, from a monetary standpoint i think learning how to do that with inside an organization can only help you out in the real world when it's time to put together a, a model for like how do i make this sustainable and not kill myself trying to do this out in the wild uh christina i bumped you up did you have uh some context yeah, I am. Um, I, I agree with what Carl is saying. I, I think, I mean, A, think, thanks for this um, uh, discussion. I think this is really interesting. These are things that I've certainly thought a lot about over the um, last five years or so that I've worked at a big tech company and now I work at GitHub. But um, I do think that the, uh, Carl is right. I think that ultimately, like, obviously it's better, I think, if companies who are approaching open source, uh, quote unquote, the right way, are going to be valuing contributions and the work that goes into maintaining something and bringing in contributors and giving back to the community and doing all the stuff that makes an open source project work if they value that and if they you know see that as part of the goal but i think regardless of what you're doing like if you're just someone who is doing your task where you're committing to a feature and none of your stuff is going towards any sort of you know greater good so to speak you still have to know how to sell yourself and sell your value in your conversations with, you know, your managers and higher up. And granted, it might be more difficult if what you're doing isn't revenue generating, so to speak. But I I don't know, I I kind of feel like at a certain point, if you're wanting to continue to get promoted, part of what comes with being uh, promoted is being able to show that you do have that extra value. And it's all about framing and about context. I mean, This is something that um, the team that I worked on at at Microsoft struggled with from from time to time because a lot of the work that we did wasn't always visible to other parts of the organization. 
And that was our fault, to be completely honest. Like I could say that it was on the company for not seeing all the things that we did and, and, and understanding the intrinsic value of the community work. But the reality is, is we didn't sell ourselves and we didn't tell the story the right way. And so that was on us. I mean, I, I think that obviously I think that there are people that could have you know, been more open to looking for those things, but we didn't package it the right way. So I think that's a, an important skill, as, as uh, Carl was saying, I think for anybody, because if you're not able to do that, I don't know how you can expect to continue to get promoted over and over and over again. And I think this is not unique to just engineering, but to any career. Yeah, thanks for that, Christina. And also, thanks for all your hard work and that you're doing at GitHub as well. Uh, Chad, did you have you had your hand up, and then we'll move to uh, our the next speaker that we had, which uh, uh, Bata. You had to correct me if I got that incorrect. Uh, yeah. So uh, I guess you know I I completely agree with you, and but the, I think the the thing that I'm thinking is because like, is there because. I know the 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 the, the a, a, a big issue is that more or less open source kind of powers our our, our our industry at this point. Like, you know, like everything, you know, we have open source projects that we have projects that we we, we leverage. We just go and npm stuff at the very least as a JavaScript engineer, but we go and npm stuff all the time, and it, it saves us from having to build potentially. Put, um, very large things to just kind of get whatever we need done. Like, is there, like, do we as an industry need to really start, you know, at least putting some systems into place, you know, like, I, I do, I still definitely agree that as an engineer, as, as any individual, you should, you should be able to advocate for yourself, you know, but like, you know, open source is such a core part of the industry at this point. Uh, should we be really thinking about, you know, some industry, I don't know, some mechanism to, to, to support contributors, industry, um, which contributors, maintainers, uh, like industry wise, as opposed to like kind of leaving them to their own devices and, you know, their own individual skill sets um dictating their success in the in in the community go ahead christina i'm washing dishes and i'm trying not to be loud on mic okay i, I just want to say i think that's a great point um the only thing i would add to that is i think that maybe that then comes down to managers who are in charge of kind of the, those people i mean i think a lot of times we're um talking about ic's who are looking for promotions but they could be managers too and maybe this is like where organizations should set when they're setting their OKRs, they need to be talking about how, okay, having this impact and doing this maintenance work on open source and helping things will help prevent, you know, supply chain attacks and will help the overall ecosystem and will, um, you know, help us because we benefit so much from this. I think maybe if, if those things were framed as goals for the company, then that makes something or, or, or for the organization and maybe that makes it easier to um, then show that work without having to go through the hard sell because, hey, I am I am committing to these things. I do have, you know, the, these list of objectives and key results that I'm needing to do. And the reason we're doing it is because we recognize that what is the figure like 90 percent of, of software is you know using open source stuff. And um, we're relying on this. Uh, it's saving the company money. But also, if we're not taking care of these things and if we're not contributing and kind of watching, we could be the victim of security, you know, uh, attacks or, or, or other things. I think there are ways that you could maybe frame the work that open source does in a way that convinces the the bean counter, so to speak, that hey, actually, this does make financial sense for us to do this work, and then also, you know, secretly be like, haha, I, I just you know convinced you to let me you know work with the community and, and give back. Uh, I, I was gonna make a kind of similar point um i kind of grew up in in large tech um worked for ibm for a while been at i was at apple for a little while as well um and i've always had and kind of come from an infrastructure background where i've always had to kind of sell open source and my current role is 
uh, managing a team of engineers who work, we work on government projects. So I, I feel like I've spent a lot of time having this conver like this particular conversation of like, how do we, how do we make them see the value of open source over closed source over paying for things that we shouldn't be paying for? And I, I, I think that that is actually a good skill in kind of, this is more just like the life cycle of an open source project. Maybe it grow, maybe it grows up inside of a large company and then kind of goes out and is maintained by a larger base of people outside of that company. And that's probably more healthy in general anyways. Excellent. I did want to let our next speaker uh, add some context. And I, I pronounce your name Patah, but I, I would love for you to correct me if that's not it. That, no, that's perfect. Thank you for that. I usually okay, get like you. potato or Peter or Pat. So <laughs> thank you. Awesome. Uh, to, to the question, it, it's definitely um, it's contentious with uh, Fang or big tech hurting open source. It, you know, it's it's a love hate relationship, especially with the companies that uh, don't understand it from a strategic point. So I would avoid those companies uh, to Christina's point. Doing it the right way would be using it as, as a strategic standpoint. Uh, there are there are communities like WordPress that I posted in the comments that has an initiative called Five you know Five for the Future, which is you know contributing five percent of your time as their as a IC or as a, as a company to the contributing back to WordPress in in any capacity, right? Either code or you know through community organizing or so forth. And so broadcasting that uh, shows the strategic advantage and can help. And I see sort of promote that internally, uh, but it's definitely a, a skill to learn as far as being able to, um, quote unquote, use sales skills to sort of um, tie tie those contributions back to the company's benefit or, or position because the, the business people most likely won't understand how it directly benefits if they're not like doing it the right way, if they don't see it as a strategic advantage. Excellent. Yeah, I appreciate that. And uh, I missed that 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 comment too. Is uh, the Twitter Twitter Spaces is interesting when it comes with this like replies and chats and there's tons of new features to, in there. But yeah, WordPress is a, a good example and and how they're sort of impacting community, making impact for just generally how people are building on the web. Uh, and there's like there's quite a few other examples too as well. Uh, and going back to the original the the original pen uh, reply to this uh, space. Uh, it was from the pragmatic programmer, so a lot of folks are jumping jumping in later. Uh, so I just want to reiterate and set the stage. Pragmatic programmer has a, um, a newsletter, and uh, one of the more recent iterations of it was talking about how folks at fan companies to get promoted, you got to show business value if you want to get past the staff level. Uh, if you're only contributing to things like Kubernetes or to other large industry-wide impactful um, open source projects you can't di show direct business value. So a lot of folks are scaling out of those projects and contributing and moving to other roles um, and needs, or they're leaving company, the company to go continue to work on open source. Chad? Yeah, so there was a particularly interesting part of the article that I saw that I found interesting <laughs> that um, talked about how there will be some people who, you know, Again, going back to the original thing of like impact is effectively the fuel to, to to drive your promotion, right? And some people will go out of their way to try to build a co a closed source solution in in um in the company, even though I won't say necessarily there will be an open source alternative, but you know maybe adapting an open source or alternative or just adapting an alternative period would be would be maybe better served but like there's a lot of 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 kind of closed sourced um projects kind of being put together solely as 
promotion engines or promotion vehicles, right? Like uh, Gagurli, um mentioned that there were six, or not maybe not necessarily Gagurli, but in in the article there's mentioned that you know Google has built sixteen different chat chat applications, some you know running in parallel, you know. So I, I found that kind of interesting as well, like. It's definitely like just this movement of okay, you leave, you you leave doing open source, you know, work, and then you you kind of go to the okay, I'm just trying to to to, to get this promotion, you know. It, it just, it's just it's really interesting and weird. Like it's just the culture is very strange to me, especially as somebody who's still very relatively outside to all of this. Yeah, and. Chad, we uh, we DM'd about this, and you brought this up around: is it is it okay that these folks are just sort of scaling or, or sort of churning out of contributing open source, and is it on these folks or other contributors to then bring other folks into the fold? So like, it, it's a sustainable problem, and this is like something that they came up with GitHub sponsors back in when it, when it shipped in the summer of I think 2019. I think was when we actually made it public. Um, but the, the, the challenge and the concern was as soon as this thing launches, all the top open source contributors are going to be, or the quote unquote influencers are going to be ones on to get up sponsors succeeding. And then all the projects you've never heard of, or all the maintainers that don't have a, a strong Twitter presence or something else are, it's just going to be the same. So now it's on the, the maintainer to become the spokesperson or the face of the project to gather contribution and money so i guess that the, the you had brought up like should we be training more contributors so that way it's not all on these distinguished engineers at, at google and, and facebook and netflix to continue driving contribution to open source uh but rather we just get contribution from new people and like naturally like it might be okay for you to retire from being the only person actually in the end of last year redis the guy who created redis he actually rolled out of the project, and um, and it, it's common. The guy who created Kubernetes also no longer regular contributor to the project. Like, I think if if it's if it's doing it right, it's great that your career, you know, leveled up to like the, to whatever it is now. Um, but it might be time for you to maybe it's time to basically I'm just giving a counterpoint to the to the article. Like maybe it's time for them to move on, and like it's okay that they they can't get promotions. And bonuses based on this. And just set the tone. <laughs> no, yeah. No, I I I that's actually a really interesting point. Like because you know, we've kind of effectively been arguing, you know, all of us on stage here as effectively at least what from my from my understanding, we've all been kind of arguing that, you know, like we should be supporting, you know, the contributor, the, the um, con I keep saying contributor, the maintainer continuing to maintain their project until the day they die, you know, type deal. Whereas, you know, maybe we should be thinking more of a system where it's just easy for people to flow through projects, you know, like the code will be there forever, right? Well, well let's not say that, but, the, you know, the code will probably be there for a long time, and it's just really up to people just being willing to put to put effort into to to you know whatever whatever changes needs to be made. So you know maybe you're right there where it's like it's less of a bad thing that that you know the the original person can't necessarily just kind of sit on that project until they they retire for whatever reason and then, you know, retire into a, in, into a luxury yacht and go sail the high seas or something. But, you know, but like, you know, there's, I guess going back to the, the original thing that I said, there's a flow, you know, of people kind of making their careers on a project that exists and has a strong community, maybe, you know, like that's an interesting point. Uh, uh, Carl, Carl yeah, you hand up. up. Uh, I actually kind of, said something closer to the opposite where i feel like this is an, a problem that has existed and or not necessarily that a not necessarily that it is a problem but i think it is a good point to some extent that people have to learn how to sell 
what they're doing and, and, and provide value and context around what they're doing. I think if you start looking through the, the leveling matrix for most, most places, small to fang level, um, once you get to staff and once you get to senior engineer, y you start to have to impact how you, how, how, how are you helping other developers, uh, within your organization get better or how are you transferring knowledge? How are you transferring skill, um, outside of your just contribution? So I think if you are somebody who wants to continue to, uh, contribute to the community, helping mentor, helping get other people into that project and contributing at a lower level may be a way to help the company be able, help the company still maintain a, a project internally, but not necessarily you hands to keyboard working on uh, that project in and of it yourself. And I think th there's always a way to connect back uh, value to what you're doing, even if it's just clearing up a problem or backlog of issues that you've had downstream for a while. I just wanted to add to that, Carl, to, to Carl's point. I mean, open source, yeah, it starts off with code contributions, but there's so much more beyond that that could be beneficial for the community. And, you know, like I, I've, you know, my personal, personally, you know, organizing uh, meetups, local meetups, and then actual conferences, that all ties back to hiring and, you know, the fact that there's such a scarcity to find good talent. I would rather hire someone from an open source community than, you know, someone who applies through the formal processes because of the ethos and the values that, you know, would align more strategically with the company. So there's a lot of business value that can be tied back to uh, the company in regards to not just directly code contributions, but other types of contributions that benefit the community, but also indirectly, indirectly, the, the company that you work for. I was going to re respond earlier um, to your original, what you were, you were saying, Chad, is that the analogy that I, I come up to is uh, like, I think everything leads to basketball for me for some reason. I'm not sure why. But uh, I know there has been articles around Netflix and how they operate like NBA teams and like when you stop performing it's like they actually a lot of the articles around layoffs have actually been around aggressive performance and I think uh, Meta and Mark Zuckerberg has been sharing this and I think some other companies rather than laying off directly uh, they're putting people in pips which is essentially like if you're not performing you get it per on a performance improvement plan uh, if you don't hit that plan then then they're going to let you go but it's going to be a gradual process, and so they can extend runway and, uh, and valuations and et cetera. But it's not too dissimilar of um, when you're talking about, like, uh, so going back to the, the, the counterpoint of what Carl just said, but, like, it's okay with people to cycle off, um, especially it maybe still on the, the where he, what you were just responded to, Carl, but it is on the person to show value. So the value is this project couldn't go on without you. And if this value is not being given back to the company, then like you're better to go somewhere else and keep working on that project or work on company problems. But like if I was working, uh, for example, like who was at the LeVar, uh, the ball brother who worked, who played for the Lakers out of college. Uh, now he's playing for another team. I don't know what Charlotte or something like he was supposed to be the greatest came out of, out of college. It's going to be great. And then exact as soon as LeBron came on and was better, and wanted, had a vision for where the team was going to go, like that guy was cut. Uh, even though he's like extremely valuable for the Lakers at that time when they were a bunch of like either rookies or scrubs, uh, he had to move on. And I think it's the same thing with uh, all the other players. You you have to decide eventually you're going to have to retire sometime. And uh, if you're not re if you're not providing value on the team today, and this is like I, I think it's uh, the way folks are approaching it, it's, it is kind of harsh, um, but perhaps it is time for the distinguished engineer to move on and do something else. And then we level up the next person to come and lead whatever the future of this ecosystem is. And I think it's, it really comes down to like open source. It's just, there's no like strict game plan on how to operate a project and how do you, how do you sell that value back into another company? And I don't know. I, I, I've, I've had the benefit of talking to lots of open source maintainers and a lot of projects. And honestly, if you, if you maintain a project, uh, please request, jump up. I'd love to learn more about 
um, how you approach this. The original question was around um, how do you provide business value if you're looking to level up? It was based on the, the original article we pinned in the Jumbotron for the space. And if you're looking to become staffs, distinguished principal, whatever the, the levels are at your company, how do you turn the value you did in open source into value for that company if it doesn't align with specific OKRs internally? So that was the, the original premise of the space and what we, we, we were chatting on uh, in the beginning. Just as an aside, is, is GitHub still doing the maintain maintainers conference? I mean, they, they used to do that. Yeah, so GitHub did uh, maintainer month um, in June. So it's every June. Um, I don't know, and I don't know if, if Rizal or Christina were, were paying attention in June, because I know you didn't drive a lot of that. Uh, but it was like, it was mainly invite. It wasn't invite only, but it was invite to the event. Uh, so they didn't have like a, a big like push or marketing. Um, I guess I could I could share that GitHub has like a cohort of open source maintainers they talk to on a regular basis, and it was invite all those folks and then anybody else who wants to come. Um, so yes, the answer is yes. They do a maintainers conference um, in June. It was remote. Uh, there have been other events like Maintainerati, uh, which is not GitHub run but GitHub supported. Um, and those are specifically for maintainers to talk through maintainer problems um, and share insights. Those also haven't gone, they haven't been too many of them since the pandemic. Um, and I know Tidelift runs an event as well, uh, which was upstream just recently, actually during maintainer month. Yeah, so there are quite a few events, but yeah, they're, I don't know how, how broadly their avatars are, are shared. With that, it, with that being said, um, GitHub currently has their uh, CFP open for GitHub Universe. So if you want to submit a talk, <laughs> maybe on this subject, <laughs> please submit a talk. Yeah, I probably should do something like that. Like, I get, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I, maybe I'll give it a shot. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, inside baseball, there are less submissions um, than you would than you would expect for the size of the conference. Uh, I don't know if people just don't, they think they have enough to say or whatever, but uh, I spent a lot of time encouraging people to submit um, in my tenure at GitHub. So uh, let me encourage you right now to submit. Yeah, I'll find it. Um, let me. Yeah, I'll grab it real quick. But yeah, Chad, I'll, I'll let you. While I'm doing that, why don't you? Uh, <laughs> propose any questions or actually, I don't know, like we're like running through the, the gambit of this, this conversation. Yeah, I mean, so it's because I, I, I'm kind of like, I, like a lot of the stuff that I kind of wanted to talk about, we've, we, we've kind of gone through like the only other thing I would say. Um, so like I thought that was kind of running through my mind is maybe we should probably have like something like Y Combinator for 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 kind of open source projects. Well maybe not necessarily but just some way of like teaching people how to, to, to maintain open source projects. You know, like the whole kind of environment. Because I can't imagine that this is like all of this like even the stuff that we talk about in this in this room in, in this Twitter space. I can't imagine that this is like information that is very readily available much less to people who you know just kind of come up with something and they're like oh i think this will be valuable and then it turns out to be valuable and then there's like this this kind of whole new world kind of opens up to you you know like maybe i i guess if there is an industry supported industry i'd say but some some kind of supported like infra infrastructure for open source projects it'd probably be like at least something to, to, to kind of teach people how to like run and grow like their community. I don't know. I, I don't know if that's the, yeah. that's. I, I would say that like there definitely needs to be something like that. And I know GitHub has been working on stuff like this internally and piloting different groups. A lot of it happens uh, behind closed doors and like private Zoom calls. Uh, but the hope is that something can be shipped uh, to sort of share all the secret sauce uh, perhaps 
open source can be that that platform. Who knows? But uh, Patad, did you have you have your hands up? I was going to say, is there anyone in the audience that is currently a maintainer or contributor uh, to open source projects and is facing any challenges uh, moving upstream in their org? Yeah, yeah feel free. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say that's a good question. I'm actually scrolling through. <laughs> And uh, I'm gonna out you if you don't uh, if you don't request. But also no pressure. <laughs> it would be interesting to kind of hear somebody's, you know, like oh, uh, somebody requested. Oh, cool, Nick. Oh, bring him up. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, okay, yep. cool. I can never tell with some of these Bluetooth headphones I have. Um, it's not it's not to mention struggling with it, but like uh, I'm a staff engineer at Netlify and I was working in open source before, uh, as I know you, you and Chad know B. Dougie, but I used to work at like Dev2 and stuff and that's all open source. The, the product was uh, open source, but we had a commercial offering and um, even as a staff engineer, though, I'm working in open source at Netlify now. So I'm on the ecosystem team in terms of uh, making sure frameworks work there. So it, it's it's not to mention pain points. It's more just it's an interesting space because we have some plugins that we maintain that are open source to make sure a couple frameworks work. But a lot of other stuff is just contributing back to those frameworks to make sure things work well. Um, so like, for example, we have contributions to like Svelte or Remix and so on. And it's just kind of interesting. And I mean, I, I know, you know, Netlify, B Dougie, but um, like they're big into open source. So like it's in their best interest to make sure that all these open source frameworks succeed. So we're just doing whatever we can to, you know, part of part of our mission statement is to remove friction for developers. And one of those things is this and then we're able to do it through open source and it's uh, you know, it's not really answering one of the questions. It's just saying it's because you were talking about staff engineers and open source. So I'm just here to say there there are staff plus uh, positions that are open source, and you can still be working in open source and work with the community. So it's not really answering the question, I know, but <laughs> but it, it it's valid to the share too as well because I I think when you get to a level of like a fang company, which uh, nullifies. Not at Fang level, but they're up there. They're they're doing a great job, uh, which I'm very happy about uh, for stock reasons. And uh, <laughs> but I, I, what I'm getting at is that the uh, yeah it's it, it's the level of, of Google and and um, to I don't know to Microsoft does a really good job. So like they're at the Fang level, but uh, I actually I I'm staring at a Microsoft uh, open source contributor right now. So if you want to want to share, no pressure, but. Um, yeah, what I'm getting at is like, or I guess that this whole premise of the conversation was more of, of like, can you survive at a Google and, and still do open source forever? And uh, I, I think if if you don't want to survive or try to like sell yourself to that, maybe it is go to a smaller smaller company relatively um, and do really good work. Yeah, but I but I do know that like uh, you know a lot of companies. Are, are investing in open source. So it's like, I, I think, you know, yes, there's definitely positions which are like, you're the architect or whatever. And you're like, you know, you're, you're, you're doing you're, you're like, you're literally architecting stuff and maybe not necessarily, you know, doing a lot of contributions, but I still think uh, given that a lot of companies are putting money into open source, it, I don't want to say it's, it's like the cool thing to do these days, but it seems like a lot of companies are getting on the bandwagon just because like other people are too. I think it's a good thing, but uh, but it's just uh, there's a lot of opportunities out there in open source. I think there's uh, like uh, and, and even some companies just sponsor stuff like Builder.io, which is another company. The I, I can't remember his name, but he's the creator of Angular. It's Mishko. I forget his name, but um, like they're building out a, another framework called Quick, and they're building that. It's open source, but I think people at Builder.io work on that because I think they use it as well. So it's there's just like lots of interesting things going on with open source. I guess and it's uh, again, I'm not answering questions. It's just observations of the landscape, really. But 
Yeah, and truly, like we're we're basically sharing our observations as well. Like I don't think like some of us are experts here, um, but yeah, for the most part, like we're all spectators and uh, trying to sort of like navigate through the space as we all level up and become distinguished engineers at some place. Well, I, I came up because I heard there was supposed to be free tacos. So, uh, anyways, <laughs> um, but uh, anyways, I'll step down. I'll let somebody else go ahead and speak. But I'll, I'll just end with uh, I dropped a, a talk in in the thread you put there, B Dougie, about uh, it's. I gave a talk for uh, Hacktoberfest 2020, and it's called getting the most out of open source. And it talks about it from a maintainer's perspective, a contributor's perspective, and also first time contributor perspective and it's not necessarily this, this Y combinator that you're talking about, uh, Chad, but there's there's just a lot of stuff in there. And you're doing a lot of this stuff in open source, you know, like automating a lot of things, you know, uh, how to triage, working with community and stuff. So it, it kind of touches on that if folks want to check that out. So anyways, uh, thanks for having me up. Cool. And I would also just shout you out. Uh, your streams are great. You've been actually talking to open source maintainers. You had um, the guy who created Fresh. Uh, yeah, was last uh, week. just recently yeah, yeah, from the Dino. Yeah, 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 it was a lot of fun. It's it it uh, it it's pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, I, that's part of what I like. Uh, you know, this part of putting yourself out there. But I just I just enjoy meeting all different kinds of people and learning about stuff that I'm not aware of. You know, or don't know that much about. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Thanks for the shout out. Cool. Everybody follow Nick. And then if you're also sitting around and looking at other people's profiles, like follow everybody in this chat. Because uh, like a lot of folks are here because they are involved in open source or are interested in open source, so um, that's the beauty of spaces, uh, especially the folks who stick around for like the full hour and and, and listen with us. Uh, I also wanted to, to shout out that Henri uh, corrected me about the uh, Lonzo Ball. Uh, he was a he was an early pick, a very talented en uh, engineer, talented engineer with the basketball, and uh, the only reason he was traded is the leverage for getting the title so even if you're a distinguished engineer just note you might get cut or traded <laughs> sorry I, I appreciate you honoring for for correcting me on that too as well talented talented uh nba player and star lonzo ball and everybody who joined later has no idea what i'm talking about <laughs> to be All quite right. fun to be quite honest i've been here the entire time and i still don't know what you're talking about <laughs> still trying to catch up man you got you got to get the nba over in the island man yeah. <laughs> YouTube TV and uh and a VPN. That's all you need. Actually, Sounds I think YouTube expensive. TV blocks the VPN now. <laughs> Unfortunately. You you're just not giving me too many options, man. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of which, um we are actually gonna be writing some code after this together. So we're gonna pair on a problem. So folks who um yeah, we're gonna be winding this down now. So Thanks so much. Uh, I actually recorded this the entire time. I don't know if this is going to show up somewhere on YouTube. Um, it is recorded on Twitter for the next 30 days, so definitely give it a listen. Tweet it out if people should listen to this. And then the goal is, like, set up a channel in our Discord, and we'll just throw all these recordings to live in indefinitely um, to hopefully clip and do stuff with this in the future. But I finally figured out how to record Twitter spaces, uh, mine and Chad's video at the same time, get audio that syncs, uh, and I say this because I'm going to do something real quick that makes is not going to make any sense for anybody except the person editing. So three, two, one, clap. <laughs> All right. That, that'll actually make it easier for me to sync it later. Um, so thank you so much, everyone, for bearing with us. Uh, first couple of minutes were uh, in silence as we were setting up. And uh, if, yeah, we'll just see you on Twitter. Uh, follow everyone here. All right. Cheers. <laughs>